Okay, perfect. So yeah, thanks uh, again for the opportunity to present in this format uh, the work that we have been doing on relation to automation and machine learning. And you are much more a, a physics oriented group and, and, and I'm very much an outsider on that. So I will just give you a brief introduction of what we're doing. We are very much focused on reactivity, interested in how bonds are formed and broken between molecules. And this happened at this very small uh, level. So we're very much interested in looking at physical organic chemistry problems, looking at the small interesting molecules that have interesting reactivity, going to larger system in uh, doing catalysis in solution and in enzymes. And we use, use a couple of different techniques, uh, including uh, DFT, molecular dynamics, and more recently, machine learning. And we have been so far uh, users trying to use all these techniques to solve chemical problems, but also trying to develop some tools that can make our life easier. And among them, we have been developing tools to generate supramolecular cages, explore reaction pathways, and uh, develop machine learning potentials. And today we desperately would like to mention these two uh, words because they are highly connected and aim to solve the aspect of automation that we have some issues with and how we can explore better reactivity. And some of the limitation and the inspiration for the work that we do is, is maybe summarized in those six uh, grand challenges that Green and Schreiner mentioned in 2018. Uh, they said that these uh, are the six challenges that we have to solve to make computational chemistry more reliable and more predictive. And we are particularly interested in those three different aspects, how we can make uh, the discovery of new reactions much faster, include solvent effect, and accurately compute entropy. Okay, so those are the, the main ob objective of our uh, work, and we try to use many different techniques to address that. And the first work that we have done is related to automation. So how we can automate reaction pathway search. And what we try to do is identify transition state and connect them to reactant and products, sometimes in one step, sometimes in many different steps. And many people have tried to do that over the years. These are just uh, some of the few contributions in this area, trying to do a completely blind search or having some knowledge. And what we have tried to do, actually Tom and Alice there, uh, and Joe have led this work trying to automate reaction pathway, aiming to provide the system with 1D representation, for example, an SMILE representation, and from that being able to compute accurately conformations at the reactant state and the transition state. We have also been interested in doing that in a very automatic way. So independent of which software you use, either Orca, Gaussian, or a other type of a, um, package, and also independent of if you are looking at organic or organometallic reactions. And we know that organometallic reactions are very difficult, especially when you're trying to use a small representation to describe that. What we wanted to do is automate that search in the sense that you provide the small representations and the computer will give you an energy profile at the end of the day. We have developed that, it's called AutoDE. You can install that very easily. And we have tested that in a, in a few different systems. But the main idea of this tool is that we try to combine a smart representation as a starting point, automated conformational search, and graph representation of our molecule. So for example, in this case, if you have this transformation, we don't try to find all the potential pathways for which a bond can be broken. We actually limit that to the information that we provide about reactant and products. And in this case, you can see that we count the number of bonds at the reactant and at the product state. We can identify that at the end of the day, we don't have any CH bond being broken. And indeed, we have only one CC bond being formed and one CO bond being broken. And that very much limits our search and make our calculation much more efficient because we have many different combinations, but actually it's only one that is isomorphic to our product. And with this criteria, we can identify a good starting point for our transition state. And we have used that to identify reaction pathway, for example, a single reaction pathway of this uh, complex natural product, where we actually just providing the smile representation, we can uh, obtain this energy pathway and the program easily identify the lowest energy pathway, like the one having this hydrogen bond interaction, which stabilizes the transition state. We can also study a multi-step reaction. And in that case, we just include 
each of the smart representations that we think are relevant in the energy surface, and we can connect that automatically obtaining this energy profile. This is for one of the metal reactions. And these are the following models that we have been using, and we're trying to develop that further to introduce more complex chemistry, in particular with organo -A metallic complexes. And this is, has been used for us is only using DFT so far. This has been the, the main source. So we have been using a DFT, sometimes single point, couple clusters. And we have still developing things, for example, introducing new optimizers because the bottleneck is still calculating good transition state, introducing other packages that may help us to introduce, again, different ways of obtaining, of obtaining transition state and combining that with machine learning. So can we obtain different parameters automatically in the same way, not only identifying the transition state, but calculating other properties. But we have some limitations still, and DFT calculations remain the main bottleneck. An explicit solvation, we can automate the formation of complexes, but sampling that properly is very difficult. We cannot uh, also study this type of complex reactions uh, bifurcating surfaces that uh, don't follow a standard transition state theory. And that has been the motivation for us to move into machine learning potentials. As they're trying to solve that, but we still use also the as our starting point because at the end of the day, our ground crew method is DFT. And you may all be very well familiar with machine learning potential. And this is something that we were very new. And we're very lucky to interact with a uh, Gabor's group in Cambridge. And the whole uh, team, in, in, his whole team has been very helpful in helping us and, and actually motivating us um, with the idea that machine learning potential can indeed solve our limitations can be much better than a classical force field because allow reactivity, and indeed can be even more accurate than a standard DFT method. And this is, I hope uh, we can show you today. What we try to do in simple words, and, and for those that are not doing MLPs, is that we try to solve the Schrodinger equation, but in a much easier way. Traditionally, we will have a Cartesian coordinate, we'll provide a set of basis set, we solve the Schrodinger equation and we obtain energies and forces, and we propagate dynamics, most often ab initio molecular AMD. What we try to do in this case is to uh, have this Cartesian coordinate, but actually use a different representation, a representation that is invariant uh, to rotation, translation, and so on, and has a physical meaning. Those are usually based on internal coordinates, Parinello approach or density based descriptor, so for example. And we have this regression task that can be a kernel based approach, a neural network, etc. And from that, you obtain energies and forces. And from that, you can do many different things uh, propagate dynamics and obtain other physical properties. Different uh, regression approaches have been um, neural network. Uh, you may be familiar, maybe a uh, new clip is something that we have been using and testing more recently, but ANI is a very well known approach. It's not a well used, uh, it's used for organic molecules, but cannot be used for uh, reactive molecules. GAP is a kernel based approach based on similarity measurement. And part of the work that I will be presenting today is based on that. And finally, ACE uh, that has been recently uh, developed in, in the Cambridge team, and we have been much uh, fun of this approach, so has been very useful and, and is very promising approach for studying chemical reactions, as I hope to show you today. And in the area of uh, reactivity for chemical, uh, like machine learning potential for chemical reactions, there have been several examples, and here I'm uh, defining just a, a few of them. The first one was in 2019 by a, a group in, in Switzerland, and you can see the number of configuration is very large. Again, a methane combustion has been studied in extreme detail, but the number of configurations that you require to study the simple reactions in the gas phase is extremely large. And we're wondering if we could do something much cheaper, because at the end of the day, if you have this number of configurations, most likely you can uh, calculate ab initio and B directly. The number of configurations has been reduced uh, with the use of active learning approaches, but still you have 15,000 configurations being used for simple reactions. So what we have tried to do is to uh, use different uh, machine learning uh, approaches to develop potential that can be trained in a day. And we usually use uh, 500 configurations and no more than 1,000 configurations have been used in any of our test systems. 
What we try to do is we use so OtoD for finding the transition state. So we provide information of the system at the reactant state, the product, and more importantly, the transition state. We automatically do uh, some geometry displacement, introduce that in the training set, and we compute if the system is stable or not. And for that, we have a, a selector, a criteria that um, initially has been based on energy. This is a bit expensive because you, you are, it assumes that you will need to calculate the, the QM energies uh, for those systems um, at, a, at a different uh, level of theory. If your system is stable, for example, we usually train at a very low level. Uh, we will say PV, PV theorem of, of 10, we will start training. And from that, we can see if our potential is stable. By stable, I mean the, the system is not exploding. And after that, when we see that the potential is stable, we can do uplift, which means that we take a few configurations and we can calculate energies at the MP2 level, for example, or the couple cluster level. If those uh, surfaces are very similar, we can even combine those uh, to have, for example, forces computed at the MP2 level, which is much more cheaper. And, and we can see that in this case, uh, using a gap, uh, we can train the model first using PVE. We know that PVE is extremely uh, uh, poorly uh, describing reactivity, uh, underestimate activation energies that you can, as you can see. But actually, the configurations that it start to give you are very um, uh, much similar to the one that you will update at a higher level of theory. And that allows us to do uplift. We train a few more data points at the couple cluster level, and then we have a gap machine learning potential, which is uh, reproducing the couple cluster energy very well. Okay. So we can uh, have the, the predictions uh, in, within the chemical accuracy, that is the, the one kilopar per mole accuracy that we're expecting uh, to have in this uh, training. And this has been the, the first reaction that we have studied uh, first in gas phase, but also we have looked at a uh, training that in solution. And here's how we propagate. Once we have a, a, a machine learning potential that has been trained, we can look at the simulation and propagate from the transition state downhill into reactant and products. And we can even see a uh, crossing between reactant and products. And this has been the, the for example, we have been using GAP for a couple of different reactions, SN2, DL folders, metal complexes as well. But later, when we started to look at some a simple uh, DL folder reaction, we saw that uh, using GAP, we were finding hard uh, to have the accuracy that we needed. And this is just one of the propagation that we see. Initially, we have um, similar, so GAP is, is relatively similar to the true value. Uh, but as we go further on time, we see more differences and the differences uh, become larger later. Even here, we see some differences to the ground true value. Uh, at that time, we were wondering, uh, do we need to optimize parameters? But even optimizing parameters here, we found a uh, difficult improving uh, over our uh, gap training. And at the same time, we started to learn about NuCube and ACE that was uh, being developed um, in different groups. And we decided to use them to study chemical reactivity as well. And we did find, so for the simple model, uh, that they, they, all of them behave uh, relatively well. So you can see here, this is uh, the reaction. You can see that it's uh, very much exothermic. And we have seen that actually the struggle that we have had so far with GAP is mostly based on, on reactions that are highly exothermic. And we can see uh, relatively all of them give us uh, some accuracy, but uh, we found a very good compromise between accuracy and training time, number of configurations with ACE. And this is the one that we have been using so far. A new group uh, most likely will have a training time that is much shorter for larger systems. So because it's scaling better, uh, and, and this is important to keep in mind, our system is very small. So this may not be a very fair to, to consider. But we say to continue with ACE because for this type of system, we're giving us the best compromise. And you can see that the number of configurations that we need is very uh, small. And you can see also that with ACE, what we try to do here is see uh, the differences. So this is the true surface in red and in, uh, so in, in gray. And in red, you can see our ACE surface. In the borders, you can see more differences. And that is because we don't have configurations that are exactly there. But in most cases, you can see that even when we don't have configurations that are 
directly sample in the training, ACE can extrapolate very well and you can obtain this surface that is very smooth, even though we have a very small number of points uh, being sampled there. And with that, we have been using that for different systems. Uh, being in Oxford, uh, David Manolopoulos is, is there. He has done a lot of uh, work in rain polymer molecular dynamics, and we were very excited to try to implement that with our potential. Uh, for this reaction that I'm showing you here, this direction is very interesting because it has one transition state and lead to three different products. So this is a bifurcating surface. Most likely, it will not have any uh, strong quantum effects. It's uh, just a CC bond formation in, in those cases. But we can see what is interesting for us was first implement the system and, and first uh, see the product version. Can we predict the product version? You can see here that in most of the cases, the reactant is not being reacting at all, it's there. And you can see information of the products. This is the main product and then others are formed in a very small amount. And we can do that often the number of trajectories that are required for converting, they have to go at least at 500, as you can see, to go have a convert number. For, for us, what's very quick to obtain compared to an ab initio MD that would be limited to up to 50 or 100. Uh, looking at classical quantum effect, you don't see much different, and that is expected because, as I said before, CT bond formations are not expected to have a, a huge uh, quantum effect here. What we saw larger difference actually was uh, the type of training that we were using at the very beginning. So it's our ground through method with really PB or MO62X. Uh, we know that this uh, function is uh, poorly described reactivity, uh, but this really time of six are quite popular two options. And this is telling us again that actually it doesn't matter how reliable is our potential, it's very important to do a benchmark calculation at the very beginning because our potential will be as good as the uh, DFT level of theory or the electronic structure methods that we are using. So, uh, it's still for chemical reactivity because the functionals are so much overfitted, some of them, it, we do obtain better accuracy, for example, with bit relief in many cases, even though that functional is not the best. So it's still a lot of benchmark and reading about the, what has been done in the literature so far. And more recently, just um, briefly to describe what we have been doing is implemented um, umbrella sampling, um, free energy calculations. So what we can do is not only look at the potential energy surface, but obtain properties such as enthalpy and entropy. And this was, again, another deal of the reaction that we were testing, where we can obtain chemical accuracy uh, from our uh, umbrella sampling calculation using machine learning potential. So the, uh, um, the results that we have here are within the, the error. And what happened if you want now to go, uh, uh, what, what we're looking at more recently is continuing using ACE, but uh, looking at chemical reactions in solutions. So can we introduce more solvent? This is the type of reaction that we're looking at. Yes, the reaction now, but with solvent. And what we have been using now, uh, changing the strategy is the selector. For example, using a soft similarity selector rather than energy, which uh, allow us to have a much more diverse data set and save uh, computer time because we do use much less configurations. So in, in enhancing the diversity based on a soft descriptor right, that an energy difference descriptor has been much more useful. And what we do for this type of system is that we, the training strategy is split in three or four different approaches. So for example, we have some configuration of the substrate. We have some other with the substrate and a few water molecules where we think is relevant. And then we have other configurations of the system with water around and other just of water. So the system is learning independently each of them. Combining all these different a test set enables us to have finally a potential that allows us to look at the reaction in solution and identify the hydroammonia interactions that we have here, but also making sure that we are describing water a, properly. And we have a, this is the result for the larger system where we have the largest error in the energy and forces, but it still is very uh, stable. And, and more recently, what we have been doing is just uh, trying to obtain some chemistry for that type of system. So if you will look at uh, calculating this Gelfalder reaction in implicit solvent or explicit solvation, we can see that with our machine learning potential, we can have a much better accuracy in parentheses, the experimental value uh, for each of those uh, reactions. 
We can also propagate dynamics from the transition state in gas phase and also in solution and identify, for example, in this case, that in solution we have here a pseudo intermediate. We cannot confirm this is a full stable intermediate, but definitely explicit solvation lead to some degree of asynchronicity that we will not be able to describe with implicit solvation. And with the machine learning potential allow us to obtain a real um, a stable a sampling so we can run hundreds of configurations and have a, a good statistic of our simulations here. So here is where we can identify this uh, short leaf intermediate. It's a 30 femtosecond, very short, but it still allows us to see the asynchronicity of the process. So with that, I will just like to, to finish and summarize the work that we have been doing in machine learning potentials, focusing on reactive systems. Uh, we have been using GAP, ACE, and YouTube uh, because we're very much users of those excellent codes and want to see how much we can push them and how much chemistry we can learn. All of them have enabled us to obtain accurate potential, stable potentials, and we have been continuing using much more ACE and YouTube, mostly based on the efficiency and accuracy. We can go beyond the FT, just uplifting. So we don't need to train everything at the couple cluster level. A defining a training strategy allows us to obtain this approach with just a few hundred of configurations. And we can do everything automated using this, this tool that is trying to read into all these different machine learning potentials that are available and combining that with AutoD, which allow us to obtain configuration from our transition state. And we're very much looking forward to continue using that into other type of reactions in solution and uh, also using metal complexes. And this work uh, has been done um, fully by, by Tom, Tristan, and and, when, and more recently uh, uh, led also by Valda, uh, who has recently joined the group, uh, as well as um, and, uh, trying to implement that into other type of chemical reactivity. And thanks to them for the work and to all of you for your attention.